Hello everyone. Um, as we all know, Dev.2 is one of the top programming blog platforms out there. And recently they decided to create uh, the first of its kind um, Dev Challenge, which runs from March 20th to March 31st, as we can see on the screen. And um, I kind of um, like the concept behind this challenge. So I decided to take part in this challenge. And this challenge is divided into three. You have the CSS Arts Challenge, where you make use of CSS and then use CSS to express your creativity. Then the second challenge is the Glam Up by Markup, where you make use of CSS javascript and html to make a beautiful and interactive um, page and then we have the final uh, challenge which is the one byte explainer this is the challenge where i'm going to get involved this is the part the one i'm taking part in it's a challenge where you make use of 256 characters to explain a browser api and they give some examples which includes the fetch api the dom and then the geolocation api so uh this is a particular challenge i'll be making a video on today as you all know i like working with rest apis on this channel and the api i'll be working on the browser api i'll be working on is called the battery manager api um if you haven't heard about it i'm going to drop the link to this mdn web docs in the description box for this video so you can go through it yourself but briefly what this um, battery manager api does is it helps to provide information about the system's battery charge level and um, you are able to know about the status of a system that is if a system is charging the time required for the battery to charge the discharge time and then the battery level so i'm going to work with this api and then display the information some of the information it uh, returns to us on the page so let me quickly show you what i have my final implementation so this is what i have as you can see uh the battery level is currently at 43 percent and then the ch charging status is yes to confirm if this is true i'm going to move to where my battery is located and then um i'm going to refresh the page as you can see the battery level is currently at 51 percent and then the charging status is set to yes because i'm currently charging this system as you can see right here the battery is the system is correctly being charged now one of the benefits of having the web battery api is it helps it can help to optimize a web application so what do i mean by this for instance we can decide to set a condition on a website that if the battery level of a particular system is below a certain point then we might want to disable some certain features on the website so that the site can be optimized so this is one of the ways in which the battery api can be used it can be used to conditionally render some items thereby optimizing both the system as well as um, the user experience on the website so that's what we'll be doing today so if you are new to the channel make sure you like make sure you subscribe and with that let's get started with this exciting challenge to get started with this project what i'm going to do is to create everything from scratch so i have a folder opened up in my terminal so i'm going to open it up in visual studio code by running code dots so with code dots it opens up the folder in visual studio code and then we can create our files this is a very simple project so i'm just going to create an index.html file a style the css file although i don't think we might make use of any styling we might just make use of um bootstrap file for this and then an app.js file that's where we'll have our javascript um, implementation so with all these files created let's generate the boilerplate for our index.html file so i'm just going to make use of the exclamation mark and with that image helps us to generate a boilerplate um, code so we can just change the title to battery api and then let's head back to the page and then go to the bootstrap 5 documentation to get the cdn link for bootstrap i'm just gonna grab this and then head back to the head section paste in the bootstrap 5 cdn with that we have access to the bootstrap classes so what we want to do is just to create a sort of um jumbotron kind of um ui jumbotron used to be very popular back then with bootstrap so that was what i showed in the demo so to do that uh, within the body let's just generate a div and it's going to have a class of margin top i'm going to give it a margin top of four and then it's going to have a padding of five 
and then gonna give it a background of secondary which is the popular color for the jumbotron class and then a text of white and finally we're gonna give it a border radius by calling the rounded class in bootstrap so with that we generate all the classes for the main parent div and then the header i'm gonna give it a h1 header and within that we're gonna call it the web battery api and then we need before i proceed i want to see if this page currently shows on the browser so i'm just gonna open it with um live server as you can see we currently have the heading which says web battery api so that's cool it shows our bootstrap cdn works and everything is working as expected so next let's create a new element so i'm gonna create a button element uh caps lock is on so the button element is going to have a type of button and then i'm gonna give it a class let's give it a class of btn btn dash info and within the button we can just have um, a text that says battery level and this is where we display the battery level and within that we might want to create a badge sort of to show the uh, status of the battery level the percentage so i'm going to create a span within the button and the span is going to have a class of badge as well as a background of secondary so it's going to give it the, the gray effect so within the button tag we, got, we, we can just create a text called pending and um before we proceed i think i would like to add an id which is going to be manipulated in the javascript section so um with that we make use of the dom uh, the dom manipulation using this id i think for us not to forget i think we should add it right now so i can just say id and then i'm going to call it battery dash level so that's all i'm going to save and let's check out the current design of the page so it's showing the way we want um apart from the pending the pending is not showing i think we have it it should be within the span not within the button tag it should be within the span so let's check the span so you can see it shows pending for now so once we integrate it it's going to show the right percentage so now i can just duplicate this button i'm gonna bring it down and then let's let's duplicate the button so the second button is going to have it the charging status so we're gonna have charging status so the charging status it's going to have a separate id within the span so we can just give it a span of um an id of um charging dash status so we set it to pending as well so i'm just going to format this document so we set it to pending and then let's save and see how the page looks like so we have the battery level currently pending and then the charging status currently pending so i think that's all we need to do for this page so uh the final thing we need to do in the html is to link our script stack that is our javascript stack to this page so to do that i'm just going to call script and then i'm going to set an attributes an src attribute and i'm going to say app.js so i'm going to save and to ensure we have the javascript file linked i'm just going to run console.log pending so let's save and then check the console of the browser to see if we have pending showing the console so as you can see we have pending currently showing which means um all our implementation works as as expected so the next step is to create the function to help us get uh, the battery data so to do that let's head straight to the app.js file so in the app.js file let me quickly get rid of the console.log so here we're gonna make use of a method called get battery navigator.get battery so um this is the default method that helps us to get the data of the battery of a particular system so to do that i'm just going to say navigator dot get battery so it returns a promise so because it returns a promise we need to change that promise by making use of dot then and then we're going to declare we're going to make a function declaration by calling function and then it's going to have a battery argument and within the battery argument uh we are going to get or extract the data we need so for now let me just console log this argument let's see the object it returns pardon my mouse so with that let's save and head straight to the browser as you can see on the top on app js online 2 if i extend the object you can see we have a bunch of 
data we have charging set to true because the, the system is currently charging we have the charging time set to infinity discharge time set to infinity and the battery level because um it's set it's 0.56 because it's set as a percentage the value is returned as percentage so to get the right uh, value all we need to do is just to multiply it by 100 and then it's going to return i think it's currently as 56 yeah 56 percent which shows is correct so the uncharging states uh the uncharging change state is null. The uncharging time change state is null. The undischarging time is set to null. And then the unlevel change is set to null. All these are set to null. So we are just going to display just the charging level. And then if the charging is currently um, happening on the system. So uh, to do that, let's proceed by adding straight to Visual Studio Code. So all we want to do now is just to manipulate the DOM and then display the data. So to do that, we need to create a new function. So this is going to be above. So let me bring this down a little bit and then we're going to create a function expression and then say function and we can just say updates. Okay, we didn't spell function properly. It should be spelled as function and then updates battery status. And then it's going to have an argument of battery. We can just for now try to manipulate the DOM. But this battery argument we have here, we need to pass it within the navigator so that we can get the data here to display within the updates battery status um, method. So let's head back to the navigator.get battery. So what I'm going to do is just to call this function and then pass in the argument called battery. So with that, we have access to all the data. So we need to add event listeners to the two events we want to listen to. To do that, I'm just going to add a comment that says event listeners for the battery API. So quickly, we can just say battery dot add event listener. And then the it's going to take in two arguments. The first argument for this is going to be charging change. So I'm just going to say charging change and then passing a function, an anonymous function. So I'm just going to say function. Hold on. So we have the parenthesis right here. So within this function, we can just say update battery status and then pass in the battery. Perfect. So we can now create the second event list now. So I'm just going to copy this and then it's just a um, similar implementation. But the argument the first this time is going to be charging time change. So I'm just going to pass in charging time change. I mean, this helps us to track when we remove the charger from the system and when we put it back. So that's what that does so that we get a real time response from the battery API. With that, we can now head back to the update battery status. Now, what is left is just to manipulate the DOM. So to do this, we're going to make use of get element by ID. So to do that, I just say document dot get element by ID. And we're going to deal with the battery level first. So I'm going to pass in. Let's grab the battery level for this um, button. So I'm just going to pass in battery level and we're going to make use of test content. So this allows us to manipulate the contents of the HTML DOM. So I'm just going to make use of back six and then the dollar sign. And we can now say battery dot level. And remember the battery dot level is returning in terms of percentage. So it's returning it in decimal and we need to make it in terms of percentage. So we multiply it by 100 and then add the percentage at the end of the bracket. So that's done for the first one. So for the second implementation, we can just say document very similar to what we did above. Document dot gets elements by ID and then pass in the required ID to ensure that we're not making a mistake. I'm just going to grab it, grab the charging status ID and then put, paste it right here. And then like we did previously, it's going to be dot text content. And then we're going to set it equals to uh, the battery, what's it called? The battery uh, charging level. So if like, like the battery charging status, so I'm going to say battery dot charging. So battery dot charging. So now we, we have to return a conditional statement. So I'm going to make use of the question mark. And we're now, we're now going to say if battery dot charging is true, then we return a string of yes. And if it's not charging, we return a string of no. So that's all we need to do. And with that, we can save. And yeah, let's see the page. Let's check out how the page looks. Awesome. As you can see, we get the charging status as well as the charging level. But there's an error. There's we have uh so many decimal points. I don't like the state of that. So I'm gonna head back and see. Um so what we can do is to make use of the method called math.round in JavaScript. So um I'm gonna wrap it within the curly brace we have here. So I'm gonna say math 
dot round and then open a parenthesis and then i'm gonna grab the battery dot level multiply by 100 i'm gonna cut that and paste it within the math dot round method i'm gonna save with that it should help us round the figure to the nearest whole number so let's see so as you can see we now have a whole number of 58 percent if you check the battery level it's currently at 58 percent as well and the charging status is set to yes so if i remove the charger as well the event listeners which we configured is going to help us um determine this charging status and update the ui as well if i plug it back in it's gonna set it back to yes so uh that's it for this tutorial i hope you've been able to learn something new i mean you can make use of the battery api to conditionally render some elements in the user interface of a website and to do some other fun stuff um i don't know so anyways that's it for this tutorial if you like the video make sure you like make you make sure you subscribe and with that um i'll see you again in the next one thank you